Okay, so we just finished talking about clouds and how clouds formed, and now we're going to apply that to surface-based layers. Because really, surface-based layers like fog and mist are just clouds that touch the ground. So instead of having moist air that's being brought up to an altitude where it's able to condense and cool and turn into a cloud, there's some sort of cooling process that's happening at ground level that's making that happen. And fog is actually named for whatever that cooling process ends up being. Uh, so if it's advection fog, you have cold uh, or warm moist air that moves over a cold surface, and then when it condenses and cools, it turns into fog, we would call that advection fog. And there are a few different types, but do you know what the difference is between fog and mist? It's just to do with the visibility. So within fog, uh, the visibility is worse than when you're in mist. So fog is any time that the visibility is less than 5 eighths of a mile, and mist is any time that it's greater than 5 eighths of a mile, but still a reduction to visibility. So fog tends to form when there are some, so you need warm moist air mass and you need some cooling process and something that the moisture is able to stick to. Stick to. So we call that a condensation nuclei. So oftentimes where there's areas like around pulp mills or um, any type of manufacturing facility where there are little bits of particulate matter that end up in the air, they tend to have fog that forms there prior to it forming anywhere else because there's all these little bits that are floating around in the air that moisture can then adhere to and become visible as it collects. So then you start to see haze and fog. Um, and that's also why on days where it's really humid in areas that, that have some smog and have some pollution, the visibility gets way worse because you have all that moisture sticking to all these little particulate matter that's in the air and it makes it hard to see, see past them. Fog will dissipate when the wind starts to pick up or when thermal activity starts to generate. So you need some sort of change to happen at the surface level for fog to dissipate. It doesn't burn through top down, it has to come and burn through from below. And that's how sometimes you can end up trapped under a fog layer for days upon days because the sun isn't able to penetrate, penetrate through that cloud layer, that fog layer, and get to the ground to create thermal activity that's going to warm the air up and dissipate that fog. Haze and smoke can also reduce visibility, uh, just like fog and mist can. Uh, on hazy days, we mentioned that, that's the kind of um, reduction of visibility that you can expect. With smoke, this is a uh, cool picture. If you look really closely, just above the tree line, you can see a little red dot, and this is the sun. This was during um, forest fires that were happening in the summer in BC a few years ago, and uh, because of the pressure systems, there ended up being low pressure over the lower mainland, uh, which is surrounded by mountains on three sides. So it ends up um, in a high pressure system that was over the interior where the fires were. So because of that pressure differential, all of the smoke um, in the high pressure region area got funneled into the lower mainland, trapped in the bowl around all of the mountains and stuck around for weeks on end. Um, it was really strange, felt very post-apocalyptic. There was ash left over on your car um, when you parked outside, and the sun just, you could look directly at it as a red, red dot in the sky, and visibility was quite bad. You could only see about two or three telephone poles away from you while you were driving. Um, blowing obstructions, so this is a photo of blowing obstructions. Um, when you have um, snow that's blowing across the road, if you've ever been driving in that situation, it can create some weird illusions where you feel like you're moving aside from just traveling forwards. It can make you feel like you're moving from side to side as well and can completely obstruct your visibility. So you can't see anything at all. It's just completely white. So you want to avoid flying in those situations, not only because it would be pretty uncomfortable for the pilot, but also not great for the aircraft's performance. You also want to be aware of other blowing obstructions like sand or dust. Those situations um, can be really tough on the propellers. Um, and if any of that can get into the motors, if they're not totally sealed, then you can run into issues where the bearings aren't able to move as freely and then the motors aren't able to spin as effectively and they can generate a lot of heat and end up doing a lot of damage to your aircraft. So you want to be really cautious if there are blowing obstructions like sand or dust um, and snow.